Nothing ever changes. Complacency always rules the day. What's up, everybody? Welcome aboard to Bubba's Bottom Line. It is Sunday, May the 19th, and welcome aboard. Hope everybody had a good weekend. It certainly was a wild week, and of course, complacency, complacency does rule the day because nobody wants to give up their riches of trying to get back into the market and chasing it higher. And when we cover the markets, we'll talk more about it, but this is, this is a very common theme. As you know, we talked about the tops being in, and at this moment, they are still in. But there are, are a lot of things going on. And of course, the last two Mondays, we have seen a major debacle overnight. And of course, the markets were down big and they spent the rest of the weeks trying to rally back. And of course, that is what we saw last week. But you know, again, are we worried about the trade wars? Are we worried about the tariffs? Is it, is it that big of an ordeal? And again, I think if you look at the price action, from the things that are most affected, you would have to say, well, maybe it's just a big deal to the politicians. Maybe it's a big, just a big deal to the lobbyists. Maybe it's just a big deal to the Chinese government because the billionaires don't want to give up all that money. So we'll see how it plays out. But at the, at the end of the day, what we have here is a, 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 a impasse, but is it really having that much of an effect? And when you look at the total pricing effect, on what's going to happen. Will it affect GDP? It, the, 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 the minute part of it, how small it is, if you just, if you look at the amount of tariffs, okay, uh, what is it, 350 billion versus just alone, for example, our national debt, okay, or our debt, our, our debt, our debt which is 22 trillion, okay? So it's a small, it's a pimple on the you know what of a fly, all right? But again, is it going to cause a problem? Is it going to create inflation? You know, that's one of the things, you know, we have said this before and we'll continue to say so, is that companies are not going to eat the wage inflation or the tariffs. They're going to pass it on to the consumer, okay, which is going to create some inflation. So, again, is, is, is the Fed doing the right thing? And, of course, the answer is always with the Fed is almost always no because they don't get it. When you, when, you, when you live in a glass house and don't need common sense to exist, but you continue to work from the library, okay, you cannot adjust to what's happening on the fly, which goes back to the same old story is that the asset prices will price them, the classes will price themselves if we would allow them to. Uh, so again, we've got right now, you've, you've seen a lot of the, the plunge protection team in play. Uh, and, you know, there's, there's a lot of things going on, but at, at the end of it, okay, uh, you know, are we seeing the, the end of this bubble that we built? You know, when other asset classes starting, start to get bought up, okay, later, for example, art is very hot right now. And I, I'm not saying anything wrong with it, okay? But when you start seeing money chase to high yield, to, to art and to other things, okay, that is usually typically a sign that the end is near. Now, again, we are not predicting a debacle. We are not predicting tomorrow we're going down. I'm just warning you. And of course, we have said repeatedly for a while we were long and then we turned short last week. So we'll see where this brings the markets to. Okay, We'll see what this does to the economy. But I would say okay, that we are either starting, in, starting A or getting close to a recession. Now, you know, recessions don't come in on Wednesday and go out on Thursday. Okay, a they take time to get in there, and then they take time to peak, and then they take time to end. All right. So again, I think we're in the very early stages. I think we continue to ignore all of the the data that's out there. I think we obviously continue to ignore the debt. Of course, if you listen to the the socialists, they want to they want to forgive all the college debt, and I hope they'll send me a check for my money for the, all the college I paid for. Uh, but of course, we know that won't happen. But at the end, we understand that you know it doesn't happen in a day. You know, market tops are not built in a day. Market bottoms are not built in a day. All right. So again, markets don't do things in a day, nor does anything else. So everything you you don't get to see the final result, which is why you have to use a solid footprint for whatever you're watching 
to make that final decision. Okay. And, and again, so I'm looking at it from my perspective. I say we're in the very early stages of a recession. You know, what, what tells me that? Well, A, what tells me that is the overwhelming complacency that we have in the, in the markets and just about everywhere. You know, everybody knows that it's easy and the markets may never go down again. Okay. So that is something that you, that you look at. You look at the, the consumer confidence numbers. The last time these were this high was 2007, eight, okay, to, uh, 2001. That is the last time we've had this so much confidence in the economy. Right? That is usually a signal because what happens is, of course, markets, history, and everything always repeats itself, and people do the same things over and over again, all right? And which is now they're becoming very free and easy. They're building even more debt because why not, right? I mean, so I say that we may be in a potential in the, in the start of a recession. Now, of course, I, I think you, you've got a lot of things happening. And of course, there's a lot of things, a lot of moving parts out there. And of course, as we look into to some of the things that are going on, you know, nobody wants to seem to abandon what's going on. Okay, everybody wants to continue to, 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 to chase, to chase, to chase. And, and of course, look, again, we are, we're, we're not saying that it can't go higher. All right? So let's, let's be clear, okay? We're not saying that the rally cannot continue, okay? It just based on what we do, it, it, it doesn't look very good, okay? And of course, uh, you know, we've got a big week of Fed officials this week, okay? You know, there'll be, they'll be talking everywhere. I want to know, where's, where's Archie Bunker? And we can tell them to stifle themselves. Right? I mean, when, when are we going to see the end of the Fed talking everywhere? I mean, who needs to hear it? Because really what you get is you get that reactionary uh, move in markets and in the economy based on some of the things they're talking about when they're talking, but they're talking like, like nothing. And I think that is, you know, again, one of the big problems we see is the, the the overwhelming involvement of other of outside information that is sometimes meant directly to create the reaction to buy or sell markets. So to me, I, I look at that and I say that that's a problem. Okay, but when you look at what they're doing and what they're trying to do, okay, you know you have now China that is talking about wanting to sell, I get out of their treasuries, okay? You know, we they are our biggest debt holder, okay? Now, again, it's the old story. When you owe the bank 5000 they own you. When you owe the bank $5 million, you own them, all right? So we owe so much. What are they going to do? You know, no, we, we seem to forget, okay, that because of the things that are allowed to be manipulated, all right, A, the United States could default on that debt, which we know they won't, but they could. Okay. B, the the Fed could create something with the dollars. Okay. So a lot of things can happen if China tries to pull the power play, and none of them are good for China. Okay. So they can threaten to do that, but what are they going to do? I mean, again, this goes back to if you remember the Hunt brothers with the silver, we're trying to corner the silver market. Of course. And of course, I don't think many people know this, but the Board of Trade offered the Hunt brothers about $10 million to walk away, okay, because they had such a big profit. And of course, they said, no, we're not walking away. We're going to keep making the money. So what do you think the Board of Trade did? Okay. They went to a liquidation only sale. You could not do any more but liquidate. Of course, that's where they lost all their money. And again, this is the same type of thing. OK, because they don't have enough clout to take care of it because they because we hold too much. They hold too much of our debt. So, you know, so when I look at all the great news that's out there and again, there's nothing wrong with great news. I like great news. Right. But again, markets run in cycles and of course, economies run in cycles. And, and this happens to be a cycle that looks like it may be coming to the end because there's a lot of issues that have to be dealt with. And, and now you're coming up to the, the, the new elections and you can bet your, you know what, that the, the right and President Trump want to keep the markets going higher, okay, and keep everything strong. And you can bet there are some things going on the left that want to get to markets to come down because obviously people are very concerned. At the end of the day, 
when you go into the voting booth, what you're really concerned about is what is your financial situation, okay? You know, can you eat? Is it better? You know, if you remember Ronald Reagan, are you better today than you were four years ago? And that is, you know, one of the big issues that always comes into play. And, and never has there been so much activity between two parties trying to, you know, to create a mess and havoc, which, again, is just a total joke to begin with. OK, I mean, you know, this whole impeachment and, and nonsense, you know, by the time that we get it done, why don't they just work and get the job done? OK, and get through. And if they can get them out in two years, that's fine. OK, but why don't they just get it through and get it done versus wasting all of our time, wasting all of our money, wasting the, the everything that they do instead of doing what they were what they were sent there for? OK. Again, and that doesn't just apply. It always applies to who's ever in power on the other side. I mean, again, it's it's a bunch of nonsense because at the end of the day, when they're looking for money, they all go back together, arm in arm, the right and the left, and they say, how are we going to screw the American people? How are we going to get more tax dollars out of them and continue to torture middle-class America? Okay? So, in the meantime... This is Bubba's Bottom Line, Todd Bubba Horowitz. We're going to step out here for a break, and we'll come back with more. In the meantime, if you want to get a hold of our new our webinars on hedging and on futures trading, I urge you to email me at Bubba at BubbaTrading.com. Uh, hedging has been great. We've been killing it. And, you know, again, it, you're protecting your own money and protecting your portfolio, so I think you should check it out. But, again, that's up to you, Bubba at Bubba Trading. You can e email me there, Bubba, 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 uh, Bubba at BubbaTrading.com. And of course, uh, be aware for our, we come out with a new product, which is going to be uh, uh, equity portfolios. Not out yet. Right now we're in beta testing, but working really well. So keep your eyes open. And of course, don't forget about our high school program at Patreon, P A T R E O N dot com forward slash Bubba Trading. That's Patreon dot com forward slash Bubba Trading. Now let's get back to Bubba's Bottom Line with, of course, me. Welcome back to Bubba's Bottom Line. Todd Bubba Horowitz with you. And of course, uh, crazy week, right? Markets were down. They looked like they were going to zero on Monday. Tuesday, they looked like they were going to zero again. And then all of a sudden, the rally began. And it was interesting the action we saw last week. Each and every day, the markets got hammered early, overnight. And by the morning, the rallies basically were on. And here we go. Okay. And it happened every day last week, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Markets were lower early, overnight selling, brought in daytime buying. And interestingly enough, you know, we did close Friday down. And, and, and again, I, I, I think, again, we have said and, and agreed. Now, we got close on Friday to potentially changing our signal, all right? But it, it did pull back. I mean, we are close to a potential change. So we're going to obviously maintain the short position in the market. We're going to maintain our call of the top of the market. And we'll see, you know, again, one of the things you have to remember about, about trading and investing is you have to be willing to change your mind. You can't be too stubborn to say, I'm wrong, okay? You know, you can't be Fonzie, I'm wrong, okay? So, anyways, uh, last week it was interesting. You know, as you know, I write for Kitco. And, of course, uh, Monday, last Monday, the gold markets were soaring higher. And I had just written that if they couldn't hold 1300 I would see, and, th and then they broke 1280 I could see 1220 1240 And of course, boy, did I get blasted and roasted on Monday, and all of a sudden we closed the week right at 1280 all right? And again, I think you get some real problems here. You better watch if you're a gold fan, gold investor, uh, because gold is probably headed lower. Now again, long term, I'm sure it's going higher, okay? That's why I tell investors not to, to worry about or panic out of the gold markets when you want to get out. Um, traders, okay, that's, you know, traders are the ones who should be active and worried about levels. Investors should close their eyes, okay? Put it away and forget about it. But in the meantime, one of the things I did want to discuss here is, is you know, I heard some, some people that I respect on certain topics talking about the gold hedge, okay? Gold is not a hedge against an equity portfolio. Let's be clear, okay? Gold may be a hedge against currency. Gold may be a hedge against maybe inflation, maybe a couple of other things. But it is not, I repeat, it is not 
a hedge against an equity portfolio. All right? You go back and look, you can check it out for yourself. It's a crack. It has got nothing to do with it. So I, I hate when they say that, well, if you had gold, you had, again, I own gold and I want people to own gold. It's a, it, but it's a hard asset that you should own. I don't, I don't disagree. But it is not going to protect you in a massive meltdown in the equity markets. It is not going to help you if we see a repeat of 2001 or 2009 or 2008. So again, own it. But if you really want to hedge, learn how to hedge your portfolio properly using the same investments. Because again, trying to guess which market is which is a major mistake for all traders okay? and all investors for sure. Now, so gold looks like it's still in trouble with, along with silver. You know, silver continues to hover around the bottom. The, the gold-silver ratio is 87 to 1 right now, which is really high. It should come back in, but again, we'll see how it trades out. Oil looks like it pushed the top again, which is, was our level. Now, again, we were using 63. That number is now 64 because we had a rollover from June to July oil. So we will be talking about the number of around 64, which is our sell point in oil, because that is where that, that is the same. That's almost the same equivalent, okay, as 63 was. So again, we'll be looking for gold to come lower. We will be we're certainly looking for a test of 60. All right, but I think 58 is the next target before I think you'll get any serious rally, and then I think you go down in the lower 50s, and I expect that to be where we're headed in the markets. You know, again, we're, we're right here. You know, we're coming to the end, right into about the peak driving season. And, you know, this week is Memorial Day, uh, you know, this weekend coming up. So that would be, that's that's when they really stick it to everybody, okay? And then all of a sudden prices should start to fall. So we'll, we'll see how that plays out throughout this week here. And, of course, we saw some, some great action in the grain markets. We, you know, we had the, 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 the nasty the trade war talk, the, the tariffs, I don't know, I'm not sure. In the meantime, you had a major meltdown and then you had a straight up uh, uh, bounce. And, and now we've got corn and wheat pushing up at their upper levels, right to some resistance levels. I think they're going to break out, but I think one of the things you want to understand is it would be no surprise to see corn and wheat sell off a little bit through a little bit of pressure just because of how fast they've gotten up and where they are. But it would be no surprise to see these pull back a little bit. I think uh, soybeans still need a little bit more evidence that they're going to go higher, okay? That they, they did make a nice move. And I think if they can hold, you know, the 815, 820, right now we use July, basis July, I think they'll be fine, okay? And I do think they're going to go higher. I, listen, I do think that the grain markets are going to be going to big markets. I, I think we've now suffered all the pain and all the torment that you can possibly get from these markets. You know, all the bad news. You get the hedge funds pushing down. You get everybody pushing here, trying to, to pound them. And I think that's finally reversed. And I think I, you could look for, on the next rally, probably a pretty good short squeeze. All right. That's what I would be looking for. Uh, you know, because I think this is what, what the markets, this is what markets always do. And that, that's what I would be potentially expecting here. Okay. So I look, I still like, we still like the, the grain markets and the meats. Hogs continue to remain in a range, you know, about 86 to a hundred. Right. And, you know, come down to 86, bang, back they go up and, you know, we'll see if they can make a run back to a hundred. Uh, and it's always a question to me how much trouble hog farmers are in when prices are up 42% um, and they're at almost highs, they've, they're at the second highest level they've ever been, except since, since the PED virus. So I'm always curious as to what, you know, as the media likes to make this big show here, uh, interesting. In the meantime, cattle looks like both fats and feeders, looks like they possibly bottomed. They had, you know, blow off bottom reversals uh, last week. And it looks like they may have bottomed in these markets finally. Uh, you know, not 100%. Again, you want to wait until those bottoms build before you get, you know, before you get aggressively involved in the markets, okay? But you do should be aware that that is a very good possibility now. As you know, we were waiting 
for a bottom. And, and now we're, we're getting a little bit closer to entering, getting ready to get in here. All right. Uh, and of course, uh, the treasuries, they keep pushing higher. You know, rates are coming down. Obviously, that is the, the, the traders, you know, remember the bond markets, the, the, the fixed income markets are the biggest markets in the world by as 10 to 20 to 30 times. They're very powerful. And you can see that they're holding, they're pushing rates down. Now, are they pushing rates down because they expect something? Or is this, are we going to see a, a rapid reverse? You know, again, one of the things we know is markets do not announce themselves. In the meantime, the bond futures, okay, continue to go higher, pushing rates lower. Again, remember the relationship, the future market bonds, when they go up, interest rates go down. Okay. So just re, when you, so again, somebody doesn't, everybody always understands that direct relationship between uh, all those. But I, I think you've seen a lot of things happening in this market. And again, you've had nothing but high consumer confidence, great news, everything you're looking for, yet companies continue to go out of business, yet debt continues to grow. You've got, you know, you've got AOC and, and Bernie Sanders trying to deal with the banks now. Again, I, and remember, I'm not a big fan of banks, right? Again, I'm not a good fan, a big fan of those who can destroy a business, okay? And, and loan, 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 and then get bailed out because they gave out bad loans. So let, let's be clear. But again, I, I think this goes back to, you know, when you're trying to limit the amount of debt or the amount of money somebody can borrow and what the interest rate they're going to have to pay, okay? You know, we, we bought, maybe you have, maybe you haven't, but usury rates, right? Uh, those, are, those are typically lending rates you get on the street from, from people you probably don't want to owe for too long, okay? But when you're borrowing, they, they had, you know, there was limits to how high they could be. You know, I think at one time, credit cards were like 30%, and then I got them down to, I think, 21%. You know, whatever those numbers are, they're obviously high. But certainly, a, a bank or a lender is entitled to get higher rates if he's taking higher risk on the loan. You know, nobody is forcing anybody to go out and get the loan. And if you, if you force a fixed rate on lending, on rates, okay, then you, what you're going to do is you're going to take away the liquidity. You're going to take away the opportunity for people to borrow money. Now, again, I don't think anybody should get ripped off at ridiculous rates, but I think what AOC and Bernie Sanders are talking about are ridiculous. Of course, almost everything they say is just about ridiculous. So I think you have to remember, okay, that, you know, if, if, if it's like buying a stock, it's like buying anything or selling anything as an investment or as a money-making operation. It's got to be worth the risk that you're going to take to make that money, right? That's why you watch. If you've ever watched some of these uh, corporate bonds or some of these uh, uh, these uh, revenue bonds or things that go on in some of these countries, you know, like well, in, 19, in the 70s when New York was going broke, okay, they had to pay a high interest rate to borrow money. They sold bonds, revenue bonds. So they sold bonds to get to cover the money, okay. So they paid a high interest rate. Puerto Rico has done it a number of times, paid big money. So again, that's, that's the same thing. The same thing in a stock when a stock pays a dividend. If a stock is paying a huge dividend, okay, that means that that company's got more risk. Okay, because you're paying yourself the dividend. You know, understand that the money comes out of the stock. They're using the money and hoping to grow the stock. So again, it's all about risk. And, and again, we're seeing a lot more, uh, a, a higher risk appetite, which, which always leads to the, potent, the potential. And we'll see what it all brings out. In the meantime, with the Fed this week, and you've got you know a holiday week, it's gonna be it should be quiet. But of course, we know what the trade wars will bring. We know there's a lot of things going on. And just remember this: markets never announce themselves. Right now, we're calling the top, but that could change. Right? But we are short, so th that's kind of where we stand. In the meantime, we're gonna step out here for a break and come back with my commentary after the break. Bubba's bottom line, top up horse. We'll see you right back here after the break. So everybody, what do we got going on? You got a Memorial Day weekend coming up, and, and what are you going to do? And of course, we're getting ready to take off uh, for a little vacation. But in the meantime, if you want to get a hold of my webinars, please do so. Uh, email me at bubba at bubbatrading.com. I'll be happy to send them to you. And also, don't forget about uh, our high school program at high school at, at patreon.com forward slash bubba trading. That's patreon.com forward slash bubba trading. Let's get back to Bubba's bottom line right now and my commentary. Welcome back, everybody. And of course, as you know, every week I find something to bitch about. And, you know, we all get these mass marketing emails, right? Everybody gets these all the time. And we all get the, 
the end of the world is coming and or I'm going to I'm going to show you how to take a hundred dollars and make it into a billion dollars. I don't understand with, with all the regulations in the industry. OK, I don't understand how we can continue to get through and get these things through and let these ads continue to run because you know who who those ads are preying on. Right. They're selling ads. It's almost as if they were a lottery tickets and they bombard and bombard you with these these claims, you know, it, it, it's it, it goes over and over again. And it's, you know, the the, you know, make a billion do do this. And, and again, I think in, in, in my humble opinion, OK, I think that that is the is, is not the right thing to do. I, I think it's no different than some of those uh, letters you get from people saying you just inherited a or not inherited, but I have. 65 million dollars and you're going to get part of it if you help me get it out of this country right we've all got well i don't know if you've all gotten them but you get these letters from you know nigeria or wherever they come from you know the saudi prince wherever it is and of course they're scams and again i don't like to see people get scammed i think that the whole key is is that we should at least have the truth and, and actually say exactly what it is instead of letting people market to, to all these other people that are most likely going to spend their money in. And of course, really what it is, is it's, it's really just a scam to begin with. It's, it's like the, the fear mongering to get, to get capital and, and the, all the things that go on, I think are, are, are not good. And, and of course, not healthy and i just think that that those are the things we should be worried about okay between that and the and the scam calls and the robo calls those are the things that we should be concerned about because in my opinion okay those are always designed to pick on those least capable of handling it meantime that is just my opinion and this is bubba's bottom line for Sunday, May the uh, 19th. Everybody have a great weekend, and we'll see you back here tomorrow with Bubba's Daily Update. And, of course, as always, we'll see you on uh, next Sunday with Bubba's Bottom Line. Have a great week, everybody. We'll see you tomorrow. Bubba's Bottom Line.